Have you ever marveled at intricate cutwork designs and thought to yourself, I could never make something like that? Well, think again, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create machine embroidered cutwork designs that look complex, but are actually super simple to make. Hi, I'm Carrie with OESD. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you the secrets to creating beautiful and complex looking cutwork designs using only your embroidery machine. You don't need any other special tools. Don't worry if you're a beginner or have never tried cutwork before, because by the end of this video, you'll be able to confidently create stunning designs that will leave everyone in awe. So let's talk about cutwork. If it's not something you're familiar with, Cutwork traditionally was a form of hand embroidery where portions of the fabric were cut away after being embroidered to create intricate patterns or designs with negative space. We are lucky to live in the time of machine embroidery because by using a machine for cutwork embroidery, you can achieve precise and consistent results every time. Plus, it's much faster than doing it by hand. You don't need a special tool or cutwork blade to create these projects, it's much simpler than you think. For a complex looking design, the supplies you need for cutwork are surprisingly simple. The most important thing, just like for any embroidery design, is the proper stabilizer. You might be familiar with our product called AquaMesh that we use for freestanding lace. It's something that we use very often, but a product you may not know as much about is AquaMesh Plus. So we're gonna use for cut work AquaMesh Plus. Some of you may remember that when a stabilizer has the word plus after it, that means that it's a pressure sensitive or sticky stabilizer. So it's got a paper backing that you're gonna peel away to reveal a sticky surface. And you'll see why that's important in a bit. So you're gonna need AquaMesh Plus. It comes in two sizes, really three. We'll talk about the third in a second, but it comes in a 10 inch and a 20 inch roll. The 20 inch roll is a great value because even if you have a smaller hoop, you can cut your pieces um, horizontally rather than vertically and get two usually out of one piece instead of one cut that way. So you're gonna need AquaMesh Plus. Something I will also strongly recommend is our perfect scoring tool. Uh, if you don't have this, it's it's a relatively new tool for us, but it is really helpful for removing the paper backing on any plus stabilizers. You'll see that in a little bit. You're also going to need a sharp little pair of scissors. Uh, these are our easy snips or a craft knife. So an X-Acto blade. I'm gonna be using the craft knife in this case and you'll see why in a little bit. It makes life a lot easier. Just be careful, don't cut yourself. So really supply wise, that's all you need to get started with this technique, which is really great because it doesn't require tons and tons of things. So let's walk through the process of making a basic cutwork design. Let me grab my cutting mat because I'm gonna need that in just a bit. So I have it ready. Let me move my stabilizer out of the way. All right, so the first thing, like I mentioned, is you're going to hoop a piece of AquaMesh Plus. So you can see here on the screen, um, right now this is not sticky. The paper is still attached to AquaMesh Plus. When it comes off the roll, it's got a side that sort of looks like AquaMesh and a side that looks like paper. You wanna hoop it with the paper side up. Then you're gonna take your perfect scoring tool, which I promise is going to become a very uh, invaluable tool to you. And you're going to lightly score around the outside edge of your embroidery space. And then I like to do an X through the middle. Then you use the tip of your perfect scoring tool to help you peel back the paper, revealing a sticky surface. So now what you have here is aqua mesh, which you're familiar with. So water soluble stabilizer with an adhesive coating, making it sticky. 
let's set that aside. The next step would be to place your fabric, blank, little dress, whatever it is you're embroidering on, onto that surface. So I've already done that and stitched our first step. So imagine that this piece of black fabric, I wanted you to be able to see this clearly, so we use the black fabric. Imagine this is your uh, embroidery surface. So I've placed that down and stitched my first step. So what we're making is actually here um, in this, on this red basket, um, we're gonna be making this tulip design. And you can see that, uh, the start of that here in the hoop. So there's two ways to go about the next step. There's a more difficult way and an easier way. And I'm a big fan of the easier way, so I'm gonna show you that. But I, I will explain the more difficult way just so you know that. But like I said, the first step is going to be, it's almost uh, like a placement stitch on an applique. But if you look closely, there's actually two lines here. So it's basically a backwards tack down. And I'll show you, it'll make sense in a second. But this is gonna show you where the negative space for the cut work is going to be. If we looked at our sample here, and you can see my fingers through that space. So we're gonna cut out that area on this hoop. So you could do a couple of things. The traditional way or the way we used to teach it is taking your sharp pair of scissors, you would wanna get underneath that fabric and not cut through the stabilizer and trim away just that top layer of fabric, trying not to pierce through all the way to compromise your stabilizer. I think that's sort of a pain in the butt. So here's what I do. I take my craft knife, and again, you need to be careful with this, and hopefully um, it's something that you know you may be familiar with already. If not, you can use a pair of scissors to do this. But I take my craft knife, and right on the inside of that line, I'm gonna trim all the way through do this on a cutting mat, obviously. You're gonna trim all the way through the fabric and the stabilizer. Let's see if we got that. So that this will come completely away. Make sure you put the, uh, the top back on your craft knife. So after you do that, it's gonna look like this. So you may think to yourself, well, that's not gonna work because you can't embroider on nothing. If you had left the stabilizer behind that and just removed the fabric, you could just stitch, you know, start stitching now. However, again, this is a lot easier than trying to get just that top layer. So this is a great place to use your scraps of Aquamesh Plus. So I know if you're like me, you hate to waste stabilizer and keep lots of little bits and pieces of it. So Aquamesh Plus you wanna keep handy because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a patch. So I have a piece of Aquamesh, Aquamesh Plus and I'm gonna remove the paper so that I just have the piece, the sticky piece of Aquamesh Plus. Then you take that and just place it completely over the space that we cut out. And you're gonna put it on top because this is gonna wash away. So it doesn't matter if you put it on the back side or the top, I find it to be easier and more stable to put it on the top than on the back. It also will make sure that your embroidery foot doesn't catch on the edge of any of that uh, space that you cut out. So you make a patch and then you're gonna just stitch your next steps. And you can see that it did a satin stitch around the edge of that negative space and created these bars inside the leaf and then stitched the flowers after that. It's that simple. There's not any more complex than cutting out the space where it's going to indicate to you. And I'll show you a bunch more samples uh, that some of them have more than one negative space. Making a patch, embroidering, and then washing this uh, in your washing machine. You're gonna find that you have better results if you fully launder your item as opposed to washing it out in the sink. Because there's so much stabilizer uh, left here with the Aquamesh Plus, it can leave your project feeling uh, very starchy, which could be okay, but especially with garments or um, 
linens, you're going to want something really soft at the end. So putting in your washing machine works out great. So again, our completed and laundered sample here. I've actually done it on all four corners. This is actually uh, kind of a, a handy trick. This was a tea towel that I made a mistake when embroidering on the end. So I cut it off so that it was square shaped, hemmed it, and now I have a bread basket liner uh, with beautiful cut work on all of the corners. Let's check out some examples of cut work. Sometimes there's only one negative space to cut out like our sample that we just did. Sometimes there's more than that. So I have an example here of a design and you can see there's actually many different negative spaces that you would cut out. That's all done in that same step, just like on the tulips we made. It will do the, essentially that tack down stitch that you're gonna cut away from the inside of for all of these in one step. This is a, a trivet I made. I wanted to try cut work on a bunch of different materials so I could talk to you about um, the fact that you could do cut work on something. This is a, a foam product, um, make a trivet. Uh, you can also do it on terry cloth. So this is a little towel, hooded towel that I just got at the home goods store. So it actually, so we've got a design here on the hood and then coordinating corner designs here on the edges of the towel. So again, you can do cut work on almost any material. Uh, you saw it on a tea towel weight fabric. This is a thicker terry cloth, the foam. Because the design will do that tack down as its first step, it's securing all the layers of whatever you're doing together. So if it's something that's puffy or has a top and a bottom, um, it will secure them all and make it easy to cut out. I also, when I think of cut work, I think of heirloom embroidery and linens. So here, let's bring my big pillow here. I have a pillowcase done with this beautiful butterfly. So you can see where the cut work is. And I think this really elevates a basic pillowcase to look something, look like something that uh, might have been handed down through generations. Also, some cut work incorporates freestanding lace. So let's take a look at this one. This is a cut work freestanding lace border. Um, and I did that all the way around the edge of a pillowcase. It did take a little while, definitely a labor of love, but you'll see there's cut work and freestanding lace coming off the edge of that. In this case, the embroidery file will actually first stitch a placement line for you to place the edge of whatever you're embroidering on down. So that way the freestanding lace lines up exactly where it needs to be. Another great use for cutwork designs is on garments, particularly heirloom style garments like these. So on this little dress, I took this floral design and duplicated it all the way around the edge of the dress, as well as up here on the chest. And then I made a custom sash just out of some quilting cotton to coordinate, uh, which was really fun to do. Here's another example on garments. It's a little t-shirt done with this adorable bow. And this is gonna sort of transition into a question that I'm sure I'll get is, what about stabilizing behind your cut work? So let me turn this inside out. So the Aquamesh Plus serves the purpose of stabilizing while your design is being stitched, but it's not gonna leave any stabilizer behind, which is good in some cases, but sometimes you may need stabilizer behind your design. Uh, for example, on a stretchy knit or a little t-shirt that's being laundered and worn a lot, because if that t-shirt is stretched too much without stabilizer behind it, it can distort your design. So if you take a look at the inside of this little t-shirt, you can see here there's stabilizer. So what I did is I took a piece of 
fusible poly mesh. So poly mesh is our soft cutaway. And before I embroidered, I actually fused a large piece to the inside of this t-shirt. Then I embroidered using the cut work technique that I just showed you. So once I rinsed the Aqua Mesh Plus away, the poly mesh is still left there to support the embroidery during washing and wearing. So this will last for a long time, or as long as your little one can fit in it anyway. I love this little bow design. It reminds me of Laverne and Shirley. All right, let's take a look at a beautiful new Cutwork collection that we just released this January. It's called Cutwork Crosses. This little dress here I made using this collection would be a perfect uh, christening gown, uh, something that you could pass down uh, as an heirloom. It took, it took me a little while, but I embroidered the Cutwork Crosses. And you can see this beautiful uh, embellished border as well, all the way around the outside of the dress, as well as a piece right here on the chest. Some other examples from that collection are, I did, uh, it comes with corners. So I did that on this hanky. So this is like what I was saying to you uh, earlier, where there's cut work and freestanding lace. So in this case, it will actually stitch down the edge of this hanky and you're gonna trim away the corner and then it will stitch the lace. I think this is a beautiful, will be a beautiful gift. Here's another example of a cross from that collection. I had a lot of fun with this one. So I just took a pre-made placemat and did another, this is a, a much bigger corner, very intricate, but I think has a really beautiful geometric shape. And then the artists are so great, they included some elements that aren't cut work. So we have these corners that actually look sort of hand stitched that are also included in that collection. So the Cutwork Cross Collection, again, released this past January of 2024, and we have that on special for you for this event. The details for that are gonna be uh, here on the screen below me. But you definitely wanna take advantage of that if you don't own, own it already. Uh, I think that's one you'll reach for again and again. Those of you who have done these classes with me before know that we love to put together a bundle of supplies to help you get started with whatever technique we're talking about. Of course, today is no exception. I've put together a group of three of my favorite cut work collections from our library. Uh, these are collections that have been out for a little while. We always get that question from our Spree Club members. If you aren't a Spree Club member, they get everything we make every month. Uh, so if you wanna join Spree Club, you can certainly search that on our website and find out the details. Our Spree members always ask, do I already own these designs? So I wanted to let you know when each of these collections that we're gonna include in this bundle came out so you can decide if it's worth purchasing or not. So the three collections that are in this bundle are great examples of basic cutwork designs. So the first one is classic cutwork and that released in 2012. The second is Cutwork Bouquet. That one is from 2010. And the third one is Embellished Borders and Corners from 2012. So if you are a Spree Club member, you can reference that to know if you own those collections already. Because a lot of you own an awful lot of embroidery. You're collectors like I am. So the bundle is going to contain two rolls. This is that third size of Aquamesh Plus that I was talking about earlier. These are a project roll size stabilizer, which means there's a little bit less on the roll, but still plenty of stabilizer for you to use for your project. But this is actually a 12 inch roll as opposed to a 20 or a 10. So this will help get you started. The bundle contains two rolls of Aquamesh Plus, the 12 inch size, and those three collections I just mentioned. All of the designs that I showed you today, minus the cutwork crosses, are in those collections that I showed you. So again, we have cutwork bouquet, embellished borders and corners, and classic cutwork. You can see all of those designs on the screen. So that bundle retails for $176. 
And of course, there's always a crazy good deal for you. So for this event, the price for that bundle, the three collections, the two rolls of stabilizer is $49. Also, don't forget Cutwork Crosses, our brand new collection that released in January of 2024 is on promotion during this time as well. That uses the same cutwork technique. Before we go, I have a couple extra tips and tricks for you. So if you have a larger hoop and you want to do something like our basket with a design on all four corners, you can actually use your larger hoop and embroider four designs in that same hooping to save on stabilizer. So what I did is I embroidered this one first and then moved my design over here. You wanna make sure obviously that you're not stitching on top of your last design. And then did a third design here. You can see I rotated and moved these designs to make them fit. And then you would take your last corner. You can see how I marked that there uh, using our perfect pencil. And you can see I have all of this empty space. And you would place that last corner down and embroider. So that's a great way to utilize as much of the stabilizer as you can uh, without any waste. So that's one of my favorite tips. You can also do that if you were embroidering four separate corners of four separate napkins. You can just place them all in the hoop. The next one is sort of obvious, but I think is really important. So I talked about embellished borders and corners being a collection that's in the bundle. This is a great collection because it actually includes cutwork designs as well as traditional corner designs. And I wanted to talk about quickly how great Aquamesh Plus is for embroidering on linens. We get the question a lot about lightweight fabrics such as a handkerchief. If you wanted to create a, a gift for a wedding or something like that, you wouldn't want stabilizer on the back of your project. So for these examples, I've got, these, are, these designs are all in this bundle, embellished borders and corners get this right side up. We have this great geometric sort of masculine corner. We also have this hand stitch looking floral. And you can see there's no stabilizer on the back. That's because I embroidered this on Aquamesh Plus and after laundering there's no stabilizer left behind. But I will say the most important thing you have to remember is that after laundering your embroidery is going to look terrible for a minute. So I purposely didn't press this one. This is a, another design from the embellished borders and corners. And this is it straight out of the washing machine. So I think sometimes we panic when we see things like this. And I want to stress how important it is to give your embroidery a good pressing uh, after you're done laundering or embroidering because it makes a huge difference. So you'll see what I'm gonna do is this, I have a perfect press cloth, which is our pressing mat. Um, here on my ironing surface. I'm gonna place this face down, grab my iron, and I'm a big fan of steam. And you can see that after pressing, of course I could press a little bit more, this looks a million times better, and there's no need to panic uh, as to what it looks like after, as it comes out of the wash. I know I, when I first started embroidering, would get nervous um, with some light puckers or anything like that. A good press will solve a lot of those problems. So this design as well is in embellished corners and borders. And my very last tip for you is something that I probably should have told you earlier, so let's pretend like I did. When you're embroidering cut work, uh, you are going to use the same thread in the top and the bobbin. That way you're matching the color on both sides of your cut work and you won't see any uh, bobbin thread on the side where there's actually that negative space. So another important tip. So hopefully those things will help make your life a little bit easier. I hope you enjoyed learning all about cut work with me today. And again, a really simple technique with a really beautiful result. Uh, hope to see you again next time. Happy stitching.